Okay, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Margaret Fontana Media Podcast Zoom interview show. As I've mentioned in the past couple of um, interviews, we've gone to Zoom because we've wanted to connect with everyone over the last couple of months through the pandemic. And so joining me today is the expert and um, the expert in PR, and this is Sarah Evans, and I'm going to read your bio. Sarah Evans, founder and CEO, Sevens Strategy and Sevens Digital PR. Um, and you've worked for like all the top companies, SAP, PayPal, Coxcom, Adobe. You've actually been involved with Shorty Awards. Did you get a Shorty Award? I don't, I don't remember if I've, you know what, I've never won any award. So I can, I can very safely say I haven't. I've gotten to do a lot of the commentary and content for them in past years, doing red carpet interviews and participating as a judge. All right, so I'm very happy to have you on here because um, you and I have been connected for a very long time. We actually met on Twitter, I believe, back in like 2009. And um, Sarah is definitely one of those people who is involved in many circles, whether it's the tech world, health, media, film, you name it. I think, I think you've, you have your hand in everything. And uh, Sarah is based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, which is also kind of sexy, I think. You know, we're on the East Coast and you're out there kind of like doing this cool thing. So tell me about what is going on with Sarah Evans and thank you. Thanks for being on. Thank you for having me. I have to, my fun fact why I always remembered you um, is because your last name is the same last name of one of my favorite English teachers from high school, Miss Fontana. Well, that's so, um, yeah, so I was immediately when I, I think when we interacted, I'm like, do you have any relatives in Illinois? Um, I remember, I remember. She's still alive, still um, being awesome. Uh, she really helped uh, spark my love of the written word and um, wow. just, just love her. Um, so I digress. I like that, but uh, I, like to, I like that connection, though. That's actually, yes. like, very complimentary. Yes. Uh, so over the past six months, obviously things have changed drastically. As I was telling you offline, uh, mm -hmm. I, I am used to you know dropping the kids off at their respective places of learning or childcare and going to my office and working. Right now I'm coming to you live from my dining room table with one having a snack, one doing his first day of distance learning, um, and still trying to find a way to provide the best possible results and um, service to our clients. And while you said, you know, I have my hand in everything, I'm glad it appears as such, but our my focus really lives with um, digital lifestyle or some sort of tech touch. So we might not work with film specifically, but if there's some technology angle for film, then it's a fit. Same with beauty. It might not be a beauty brand, but if that beauty brand has a tech um, consumer tech product or, or a new app or, or something really innovative and unique, they would be a fit for us. So I, I love what I do. I created my job 11 years ago now and, and haven't looked back and feel very lucky every day to do what I do. So Sarah, also you mentioned digital and technology. So you are basically known also as like the person on the ground at CES. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, I'm just going to let you be right on that one. And I have some other friends who I would say are much more uh, visible Shelly Palmer, uh, one of oh, which yeah. He, he, yeah, he has He's great, great. Um, uh, reach and, and view there. But I do get the opportunity to work with different brands and do kind of that, that on the ground, um, which you wouldn't usually say, it would say reporting because I'm on the PR side of things, but I serve as a spokesperson or correspondent for those brands doing things like satellite media tours, doing tours of the floor to see what trends are happening and creating content for them or on the back end and on the not so public and getting them visibility and media attention as well. Yeah. So you mentioned you started the comp your company 11 years ago and you know, what, what were your steps? What was the process in actually um, becoming your own brand? Because I personally, like if I look you up online, um, you know, I don't think of you as Sarah Evans. I actually think of you as PR Sarah Evans, you know, because, because it's like, that's how you've branded yourself over the years. So what, is, what were you doing like before you decided, um, you know, I need to like step off and, and do my own thing? Because um, I'll tell you a lot of the other folks that I've actually um, interviewed, a lot of people are talking about their process, like how they got to where they are and, and like the why, you know, like why did I go into business for myself? And, you know, did you have to put in work? How much, how much of the dues did you have to put in before you went out and did your own thing? So I can tell you some of those key moments. Number one was uh, my very first mentor. She would 
often ask me questions. What, what do you want in the next five years, 10 years? And it wasn't so much specifically like I want X job title or I want to make this amount of money. It was, what do you want that career to look like? And I always said, when people hear my name, I want them to know what it is that I do. Right. And one of the ways when I built my brand was adding in the PR in the front because I thought then there's no discrepancy about what I do because people will know. Um, and, and even though PR has changed and evolved, everything I do is about bringing people together, building influence, creating visibility for folks. So that kind of always lives with that. As far as the hard work, I've never worked harder than when I started my company at the time. Much like you, Margaret, I began in healthcare. I was um, manager of communications and government relations for a large healthcare system, and then was director of communications for a college, did some PR agency work, and all of that before my 30s. So I, I hustled really hard. It was pre kids, you know, I, I had a bit more time. Um, and then when I decided that I really wanted to do this on my own, I was working a full time job and then freelancing, moonlighting in the evening. And my goal was to have at least three. I'd say anchor clients, people who signed up for, you know, monthly retainer before I could leave my full-time job so that I had some safety net. And mm -hmm. then I also wanted to have at least three months of salary or self-employment salary built up. Yeah. So that way, if things went awry, I had a little bit of, of safety net underneath me. Yeah. So in kind of talking about, you know, what you've built up until now and like, you're, you're super successful, you know, like you, you're, like I said, you're, to me, you're, you're just known as the expert in the space. And so if someone, you know, is building a brand and, you know, they're thinking like, oh my gosh, we need media, we need all this PR attention. I kind of just want to like dissect that a little bit and, and kind yeah. of get your views on what like how do you pitch so if i'm if i'm a brand and i'm coming to you and i hired you to you know help me help me get to the next level you know what is the perfect pitch or how should you be pitching if you're a brand you know one of the first things i share with every client i was actually looking for the document that i share with everyone it's this um formula for what is newsworthy uh, and that's one of the most important things because people will say oh well we've got this you know, every everyone drinks their own kool-aid and they think what they're doing is the best and and most notable, and they might say, you know, we really want to be in the New York Times, and then you go search for them online, and there's no social validation, there's no media validation, there's nothing to really confirm who they are and what they say they do, so really, you have to take about 10 steps back, and the New York Times of the world are amazing, but they're, as you know, few and far between, so how do we create something that has some traction, and if that is one of the goals, that's amazing, and that can always be um, something that you work towards, but I always say we need to create those validation points. So people are searching for you, reporters are searching for you. What are you saying about yourself? What are other people saying about you? Mm -hmm. So we go through that exercise and then we look about like what is actually newsworthy. Are you the first, best, newest, latest, or greatest? Do you have compelling facts or stats with viable research that you've done? Is it a report? Is it a study? And is it, you know, credible in and of itself? Do you have an amazing human interest? story has someone's life been changed and is what happened to them either completely unique or is it something that could be emulated or repeated to help others and is it timely um, and relevant meaning do you have something that's going to change the course of COVID-19 to help people people live better work better wow. feel better yeah um, and so you know we go through that exercise as well and it's like once you go through those things I treat every client like a PR partner they don't have to know how we work, but they do have to have some core fundamental understanding of what this entails so they can see the process. This isn't just, wow, PR failed me because I wanted the New York Times. That's just like self-fulfilling prophecy. They weren't ready for it. So of course it's not going to work. Um, or their story isn't at that level. Mm -hmm. I love it. So when you talk about the validation, and I think this is an important part because whether you're working for an individual client or whether you're onboarded because you're working for a massive brand, isn't it important to break down and explain why your digital presence is so important? And, and part of your digital presence is not just your website. It's really building that credibility on social media. So can yeah. you speak can you speak to the importance of really, you know, building a social media presence? Sure. Let me, I'll, I'll just talk about this from an example. Since we work with um, a large segment of tech startups as well, many of them are going for funding uh, or they, they complete their series A and we do a lot of media for them and then they're building up for their series B and they want investors, media, um, potential users to see them, learn about them, hear about them. So we look at 
the concept of it takes five touches or seeing your name five different places for people to either remember you or check you out or maybe come back if they, um, if they need you. So social is one of those key points. But we also want to integrate social to ping people in your network, meaning make it work for you. So let's look at LinkedIn. You connect with folks there and LinkedIn has a feature once you're connected. If you're in a certain caliber of news story or space, you'll get an email digest. So and so in your network was in the news. Um, so we know that let's say we look at paid and organic ways to do this. So if you're a startup, you're connecting with potential VCs you're interested with or media, and then you get quoted um, by a Forbes contributor, or maybe you pay to be on a Forbes council, mm -hmm. and you yeah. start contributing. Every time you're mentioned there, you're pinging those folks. Or maybe you invest in a wire release, um, because while it might not generate organic media coverage, it's one way to hit SEO. So if somebody's monitoring you, they're gonna get pinged with Google alerts. What do you feel, or how do you feel about the traditional press release, right? Because you have, I know I've been in meetings and, and I've been places where people are like, "Ugh, we don't need that. You know, just throw it out in some kind of like pitch to some reporter. And then someone else is like, no, but you need the press release because you have to post it to the website. So like, where do you think that that is right now? I think what's old is new again. And I've never used <laughs> press releases more than in the past six months. And we treat it as um, as kind of a well-oiled machine or process right now. So we write the press release and I force folks to really dig into that who, what, when, where, why, and how. We use the pitches for more personalized opportunities, but for a lot of places, especially if they're short on staff right now, depending on the nuance of the story or the industry, they're taking from that press release mm -hmm. for information. So we might do a wire release, um, post it to the blog, modify it for stakeholder communications, modify it again for another blog post. Um, if it's a cross promotion with two brands, then they're each taking it or contributing a quote. Um, and then, so we, we're using it various places and we want all of that to drive um, opportunities for messaging, SEO, media hits. Um, so I'm, I'm using it more now than ever. Yeah. And then how do you feel about, um, you know, like there was, a, there's this discussion about like the video press release and it's almost like a lot of folks are either taking like maybe their CEO or the president of a company and the president's like on camera, like they scramble, get the video guy and the video guy's like, they're setting it up. And now the, pr the president or whoever has to remember what the press release is. And he's kind of like spewing off this, this, you know, what they're calling the video press release. Like, how do you feel about the traction? I mean, I know video has like great traction, but how does that translate if you're putting like the figurehead and then someone's pushing out a press release, like verbally just jargony? So there's newsworthy and there's cringeworthy. And I would say that it's, oh, hi, uh -huh. bud. Just taking a break. Um, so and I, he's adorable. Uh, <laughs> so the cringeworthy side of things, I've yet to see a video style news release that's done really, really well. And I think if you're approaching it with that context, it's, yeah. it's a miss. Um, there's a way to have your figurehead or spokesperson supplement or share interesting, different nuanced information, something different um, than what's in the press release. But I still think you need the press release. And until the day that your videos are getting indexed by Google and being utilized in other ways, you need a comprehensive approach. But if you approach it as this is just our press release in mouth vomit form from a CEO, it's, it's not very good. So with everything that's happened in the world, right, it's like, how can we not talk about like the pandemic and how we've been consuming digital and how we've been actually receiving information. So what are your predictions now being that like, I almost feel like 2020 in my mind, I feel like 2020 is over, you know, it's like, because from a business standpoint, it's like, okay, what are we doing for January, or February? So where do you think PR, digital, and, you know, the consumption of a consumer, or the consumption of anyone who's kind of taking in media, where is that going to go? If you didn't know it already, um, you've already discovered this. We're all in the, in the video business right now. Um, we all are creating content from our homes, our maybe socially distanced offices, but the, the entire dynamic has changed. And as my good friend and neighbor always says, 2020 is chicken Caesar, wrap it up. You know, it's, it's at, it's at, it's at, it's at, it's at I love it. Say, it's lunchtime. So distance learning lunchtime. And I will be getting it as soon as we're done with this call, kiddo. Um, we're on a brand new schedule as of today. Well, that's um, glad, glad to so, see you back in the schedule, though. That's good. <laughs> yes, it's nice. So our chicken Caesar, wrap it up. But we're planning for 2021, and we're just going to maintain, I think, what's working right now. We're seeing a lot of folks, you know, CES is not going to be 
in person this year. So finding ways to still connect with those potential audiences that you were looking to meet. I think people are going to innovate and just utilize what they know to be happening this year. I mean, we, we just have to build those connections, whether it's getting on people's calendars, scheduling right. virtual coffees, joining um, public chat rooms or areas where people can really just, just okay. get together and connect. I think people are hustling to make that happen. That's and I think next year we'll, we'll have a mashup of the two. And then a year after that, go back to more of the right. in person. It's going to take probably like two to three years before we like shake out and actually see like what's stronger. Yeah. Right. Or maybe it's a combination of both. I mean, who knows? Um, so is there anything in particular before we kind of like wrap up our conversation? Is there anything in particular that you're working on? I mean, I know you were doing a TV segment yesterday. You're surprised, right? You're going to be promoting that in the next couple of days, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but what else is going on with you? Is there anything that you're promoting in particular that, um, that we want to talk about? Um, I think right now we are so just heads down with our clients. I have done less self brand promotion. Um, but one of the things I'm working on launching very softly are digital, um, paid private digital series for folks who are looking to up their professional skills. One of the packages that I'm putting together right now is something really driven for the C-suite or executives where PR folks can, um, get them to participate in how to be a PR partner uh, Ooh, leadership okay. series where you really okay. focus on story identification, types of media opportunities, uh, media expectations, results yeah. expectations. One of the things I've found being a consultant is that people can bring me in and say the exact same thing that they just said. And because they paid me and I'm external, they believe it. So I'm utilizing myself as a resource for PR folks across the country or across yeah. the world to be that, that um, connector for their C-suite. Very needed. And I'll tell you from the corporate stand, you know, from the corporate side and being in it, it's so needed because I mean, it's like digital is happening at such a fast pace. And then like people yeah. are kind of getting confused with like, what do we do traditionally? And is it yeah. this, is it that? So I, I, I would say that that's probably one of the best thing education con education is the way to go. Um, yeah. and so I think that's really cool. That's awesome. So Sarah, I want to say thank you. And, um, this was an amazing conversation. I want to have more conversations with you and maybe we'll touch base before you do your thing with um, CES, your next big event. I mean, yeah. I always want to like stay in touch and like see what you're doing because you're always like on the cusp of like cool stuff. And um, so everybody, this is Sarah Evans, founder and CEO, Sevens Strategy and Sevens Digital PR. And you can find her on Twitter. You can find her on anything. But she is PR Sarah Evans. <laughs> You are you so PR, much. Sarah Evans. It's, uh, you've never been anybody but PR, Sarah Evans, right? That's it. That's so it. thank you so much. And um, hopefully it cools down by you too because you're out, you're out where it's like massive, crazy heat waves right now. And um, so we'll be talking soon. And I'll just start here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.